Well, I've got something truly game-changing to share with you. If you're a fan of squeezing every ounce of power from your home lab or edge environment, stick around because VMware's new feature in vSphere 8.0 Update 3 is about to blow your mind. We're diving into NVMe memory tiering, a secret weapon that could literally quadruple, yes, you heard me correctly, quadruple your mini PC's memory. Let's dive right in. But first, before we get into the awesome video for today, I want to share a word about the sponsor of today's video. When you have tons of infrastructure, whether it's on-premises or in the cloud, you know that having visibility and a map of your devices, services, and application dependencies is extremely important. This is where Fathom comes into play, and it makes this typical nightmare a breeze for system administrators. In fact, when you install Fathom, it goes out, it maps out your infrastructure, including networks, application dependencies, and even subnet dependencies. It can do this in around one hour of installing it in most environments. It goes out and it maps out all of the services and infrastructure and it groups these into logical business applications all without the need for agents. You can automatically map and monitor application dependencies and that is extremely tedious work to do manually and it helps you to make sure you understand the critical connections between your applications and your infrastructure and you can identify bottlenecks, problems, and streamline your IT operations. It's one of the easiest monitoring and discovery applications I have in install in my environments. All I had to do was point Fathom at my VMware vSphere environment with distributed switches and it literally went out and did all of the rest. I really like that Fathom provides continuous automatic documentation. It can also do things like change management, impact analysis, cloud migration, data center migration, cybersecurity, and you can start out monitoring 100 servers for 10K a year. You can also stand this up in a 14 day trial, which I recommend everyone does in their home lab environment, kick the tires on the solution and see just how well it does what we've talked about. I'll have the official link to the solution in the description for the video. Just when many are thinking of dumping VMware, they are still proving why they are the best of the best and they can charge the premium prices. VMware has been rolling out some impressive features recently, but NVMe memory tiering and vSphere 8.0 Update 3 might just possibly be the most exciting thing that I have personally seen in quite a while for home lab environments. Now, what exactly is NVMe memory tiering. Well, simply put, it's a smart way to expand your system's memory by leveraging ultra-fast NVMe storage as an extension of your DRAM. Now, many have thought, is this just simply like a dumb paging system that VMware is adding? Well, no, it's more intelligent. Unlike traditional paging, this isn't just about off offloading data. It's intelligently placing memory pages where they're most needed and maximizing performance. Memory tiering over NVMe, as VMware calls, it optimizes performance by intelligently directing VM memory allocations to either NVMe or faster DRAM in the host and performing hot and cold memory page placements. Now, NVMe memory tiering allows VMware to decide which memory pages stay in your fast DRAM and which can be moved to your NVMe storage. So think of it like having a dynamic memory manager that knows really when to tap into the extra power of NVMe when needed. This isn't just about adding more storage. It's also about optimizing the performance of your virtual machines in ways that really we couldn't do before vSphere 8.0 Update 3. Now, as a note, for vSphere 8.0 Update Update 3, memory tiering is released as a tech preview to allow customers to evaluate the memory tiering feature. The basic functionality of memory tiering is supported with limitations on more advanced functionality. In other words, VMware is polishing this technology and they are telling us that it is not where it will be when they release it as GA. The tech preview supports using PCIe-based flash NVMe devices as tiered memory. Memory tiering must be configured on each host in the cluster to benefit from it. Memory tiering is also recommended for use by customers who are running specific workload types, specifically in test and lab environments, at least at this point, and not for use in production environments. 
So what are those virtual machine profile type recommendations that would fit well with VMware memory tiering on NVMe devices? Well, memory tiering does not require any changes in how VMs are configured. And to me, that's one of the awesome things about this new tech preview is that you don't have to do anything fancy or reconfigure virtual machines. It just works once you configure memory tiering, as we will see in just a bit. In the tech preview, all VMs powered on a host with memory tiering over NVMe will start using it by default. As a note for this tech preview, large pages are disabled by default. For the tech preview, when memory tiering is enabled, VMs will be configured with large pages disabled by default. And this behavior is only for the tech preview since performance has only been, at least at this point, optimized for virtual machines configured to use 4K pages, in other words, small memory pages. VMs can also be configured to use two megabyte large pages when memory tiering is enabled. This is not recommended by VMware, at least at this point, but it can be done for evaluation. It should be noted though that performance is not been optimized as well for these types of VMs with those specific sizes of memory pages. Also, configuring VMs to use any other large page size is not supported and will result, according to VMware's documentation at this point, in a VM failing to power on. Now, what are some specific unsupported VMs for this NVMe memory tiering feature or memory over NVMe? For the tech preview, all VM profile types are supported except certain VM types. And and those are VMs that require pinned memory or pre-allocated memory. Also, latency-sensitive VMs, VMs configured with PCI pass-through devices, VMs configured with Distributed Services Engine or DSE, universal pass-through, VMs configured to use virtualized quick assist technology, VMs with one gig large pages, VMs that are configured to use nested virtualization, which definitely would weigh into the home lab, VMs configured to use virtualization-based security or VBS, VMs configured to use virtual software guard extensions or SGX. So there are several types of VMs to make note of and features that are enabled in those VMs like nested virtualization that you really need to pay attention to and know about. Now other things to note about networking with this NVMe memory tiering. Under certain circumstances according to VMware using the VMX Net3 or the most modern network adapter can result in slow networking performance and it may be a state according to VMware that may not resolve itself until you pass power down the VM, power it back up. It is currently recommended by VMware with this tech preview to use the E1000 or the E1000E as the networking adapter of choice when enabling this memory tiering feature in the tech preview form. Now also something else to note with DRS, in a DRS managed cluster, DRS is currently unaware of the limitations of the tech preview and might schedule migrations of unsupported VMs to host configured to use memory tiering. That would lead to repeated vMotion failures since those hosts would not allow unsupported VM profile types to be powered on. So now after getting past all of the black and white of the tech preview release notes, let's actually do the fun stuff. Let's actually enable NVMe memory tiering and I want to show you guys why I'm so excited about this technology when it comes to running VMware ESXi hosts in your home lab and making the most out of today's modern PC hardware. I want to show you guys to begin with the boot process of the test mini PC, which I've got a mini forum MSA1 that I've been testing this memory tiering feature on. And I want to show you guys just the boot of the A1 and how much system memory is displaying in the boot process for VMware ESXi. So I, you're, you're seeing the total amount usable here of 93.7 gigs of memory. So I have a 96 gig kit that is installed inside the Minis Forum MSA1. So we've got roughly 96 gigs of memory minus some overhead there. Building upon that, what we're going to do is enable the NVMe memory tiering feature to see what effect this has on the system memory. So now that we have booted our Minis Forum MSA1 mini PC, I want to uh, show you guys I'm SSH into that mini PC. Now let's enable the 
NVMe memory tiering feature. And there are about four or five steps depending on, in other words, if you've used the NVMe drive for something else and it has foreign partitions on it, we're going to have to do some cleanup there just to get it in a state that's usable for the NVMe memory tiering. But we're going to go through all of that. So the first step is to actually enable this feature. And to do that, it's just a simple command, an ESX CLI system settings command. And notice we're, we're saying kernel set dash S memory tiering dash V, and we're going to put true. So simple as that, no extra return to the output of the SSH prompt. Now, if you don't know the identifier in your ESXi host for your NVMe drive, we're going to have to find that information out. The command that you can use to list out your NVMe devices and your storage devices in general is ESXCLI storage core path list. And we can return that command and we can see all of our NVMe drives that are contained in our system. I'm interested in this Kingston NVMe drive. That's the one that I've kind of got earmarked for this test to do NVMe memory tiering. Now the identifier that we need is this device string and it starts with a T10. And I believe it starts that way for any NVMe device, at least in my system, that's what I see. So we're going to copy this string. So it starts with T10.NVMe, then it's got a lot of underscores and we're gonna copy it all the way to the end of the string. And I'm gonna use that and I'm going to put a few commands in front of that. And it's going to allow us to look at the partitions that we have on that device. And I'll show you guys what that command is. Clear this out. And I'm going to paste this in. We're going to use the parted util command. And this parameter that we're passing, get ptbl, will list all of the partitions that we have available or that may already be created on this particular device. And we can see that we've got a partition on this device. So what we're going to do is delete off those partitions. And we can do that using another parted util command, except we're going to pass the delete statement. And we're going to put the one on the end telling it to delete the partition, the first partition. So we've deleted that. And now if we do get ptbl, we can see that we've removed that partition from our device. So now what we need to do is we need to mark this device as our tier device. So we're going to claim that device, so to speak, as part of this process to enable NVMe memory tiering. So how do we do that? Let me clear the screen. And we're going to use another command, ESX CLI system tier device create dash D. And we're essentially going to paste the exact same string that we've been working with with the other commands, the VMFS devices disk, and then our identifier that we got from our command that we ran earlier. So let's do that. We're going to pass that device in. And again, no output, which is good in this instance. It means we don't have any errors. Now what we can do is actually list from the VMware ESXi perspective, which disk is allocated as a tier device. Command is ESX CLI system tier device list. When that returns, we can see that it correctly thinks that the Kingston NVMe device is the one that is allocated for this VMware ESXi tier device. Now we have one final step. So now all that we have left is to tell VMware ESXi what percentage of NVMe memory tiering that we want it to use. Now I'm going to paste in the command to show you how this is done. The maximum that we can set is 400 for this value. So we can go anywhere from 25, 100, 200, but in this case the max is 400. Now what does VMware say as far as best practice? Well they would like to see you set this number to 100. And what that means is that VMware ESXi will only use the same amount of NVMe space as it has system memory. So if I were to set this to 100, it means that 96 gigs of memory essentially will be allocated from the NVMe storage device. And I am gathering that this is a best practice for performance. If you've got a terabyte of memory, um, you're going to see also and need a terabyte of NVMe storage or half a terabyte. You're going to need half a terabyte of NVMe storage. So if I set this to 
100, it will allocate the 96 gigs on top of that. However, what I'm going to do is go for broke and we're going to set this to the max, which is 400%. That means that we're going to allocate 96 gigs of memory times four onto our NVMe disk. Then we have to keep in mind, we've also got the 96 gigs of memory that is DRAM or the actual physical memory that we have installed. So we're getting 400 gigs of memory plus the 96 gigs of of DRAM that we already have physically installed inside our VMware ESXi host. So I'm going to run this command. I'm going to set it to 400, reboot the VMware ESXi host. And I'm going to take you guys, once I initiate the reboot of ESXi, I'm going to take you to the console of the ESXi host, and you'll be able to see with me extra memory from the NVMe memory tiering presents itself. Okay, so we have VMware ESXi booting. The boot process has initiated on the Minis Forum MSA1. We're going to see the 93 appear. And I know when I did this before, I thought, oh man, it's not working. But just wait. When the boot process gets a little bit further along, we will see this amount of memory that's displayed on the console screen be adjusted to, drum roll, 468 0.3 gigs of memory. Just fantastic. I mean, how incredible is this? This is a mini PC now with essentially 468 usable gigs of memory. Awesome. So guys, how cool is that? NVMe memory tiering in VMware ESXi is potentially one of the most exciting technologies I've seen specifically when thinking about home labs is I think this is going to allow us to push the envelope of what the hardware can do. This NVMe memory tiering feature we want to note and underscore is a tech preview. So there's going to be the possibility of bugs, of things not working correctly, of potential crashes of virtual machines, I'm assuming. It's not quite production ready yet. And VMware has openly disclosed that they have not optimized all types of workloads for use with NVMe memory tiering. However, in my lab, I know I'm really excited. I have it already flagged on on a couple of mini PCs, been playing around with that, and I am really excited about the potential of this new technology. So thanks for tuning in, guys, to this video, this deep dive into VMware's new secret weapon for home labs. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, to subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on the latest in virtualization tech like this NVMe memory tiering feature that I've shared with you guys today. And until next time, this is Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Keep on pushing the boundaries of what your home lab can do. Keep on home labbing. Stay safe out there, and I will see you on the next video.